Angie has made it easier than ever to hire high-quality pros to get all your home service jobs done well. Whether it's routine maintenance and emergency repair or a dream project, Angie lets you compare quotes from multiple local pros, browse homeowner reviews, and even book a service instantly. Angie's been connecting people with skilled pros for nearly 30 years. So the next time you have a home project, bring it to Angie to get your job done well. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Hi, I'm Angie Hicks, co-founder of Angie. When you use Angie for your home projects, you know all your jobs will be done well. Roof repair? Done well. Kitchen sink install? Done well. Deck upgrades? Done well. Electrical upgrade? Done well. Angie's been connecting homeowners with skilled pros for nearly 30 years, so we know the difference between done and done well. Hire high quality certified pros at Angie.com. I know now that she badmouthed my store to a bunch of customers. How do you find Stacy? Stacy. This is the plaintiff, Laura Greenfield. She says she owned two clothing stores and sold one of them to the defendant for $100,000. The woman paid her 70 grand up front and was supposed to make 12 equal payments until the full amount was paid off. Well, she made 10 of those payments and then just up and stopped for no reason. She's very angry at the defendant now. The woman's left a bad taste in her mouth and she just wants the $5,000 she's owed. That's why she's suing. This is the defendant, Lisa. She says the plaintiff promised to train and mentor her for a year after the sale, and the woman never helped her at all. She was way too trusting with the plaintiff. Feels like a fool now because she didn't get her end of the deal, and quite frankly, was conned. Oh, her? No way. She's accused of being two payments shy. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $5,000 for breach of contract. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. You see it? Come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're All right. Laura Greenfield, you are suing Lisa. You've asked us not to mention your last name and her boutique, which you've also asked us not to mention. For $5,000, you say you're out actually more than that and uh, on a business deal that the two of you did, and you have a counterclaim against her for $5,000 for breaching that very same business deal. Okay. You go first. Tell me what the business arrangement was between you two, how you met, and what ended up happening. Okay. Um, I wanted to sell one of my two businesses. I own two clothing stores. Two clothing stores. Okay. Yes. Okay, two boutiques. And, two boutiques. And what do you specialize in in these stores? Women's clothing and accessories. Okay. Lisa decided to buy my store in uh, September of 2014. All right. And as I understand it, you put down 70000 and the rest was going to be monthly payments for a period of how long a year? 12 months, yes. Okay. And you, and it, part of the deal was that you were going to mentor her because you were new at this. Yes. I had am. you ever owned a boutique before? No. Had you I, ever worked at one? Nope. Okay. How, so how did this come about even to begin with? It just was always my dream. And as soon as I saw, I was looking for a business. Okay. And as soon as I saw the opportunity um, and the advertisement, that said, in all caps, you will not be alone. Mentoring, purchase power, I have with me. Let me see that. Where did you see that? Online? Online, okay. yes. And on the, this, on the back of that page also. So, but it was always your dream to have your own business or was it always your dream to have this business? Like, a, not this one in particular, but a, a, a women's clothing store. Yes, but I didn't know how about to go about doing that. So this I This turnkey business comes with a fully trained staff. The new owner will not miss a beat. will have the benefit of learning the business while making money. Okay. We so, then, oh, sorry. Oh, so, so, do you have the actual agreement that the two of you signed? Yes. We do. Can I, also I, have can, some... I, can I have it from both of you? Because I want to be able to make sure we're looking at the same thing. And go ahead. Oh, I have a letter that we signed on July 2nd, 2014, that specifically states 
um, that she'll train. Is that me. included in the stuff that you gave me, or is that okay? Hand it over. Perfect. There's two pages that I need you to look at. Okay. So you're suing because she refuses to pay you the last two payments. Correct. Correct. All right. And did she give you a reason for why? Well, her original reason was that she was trying to recover from August. That what does that was, mean? Because August is traditionally a bad month in this business or yeah. something? Yeah. Okay. But it is the truth. I mean, okay, August this is what, a, an email? That's an email. Okay. And that is me asking her for August payment because she was late. How, when did the problem start? It, the problem started in August. Because she didn't pay you or something no. else? No. Uh, I believe it was because my ex-employee and her became friendly and all of a sudden... Who is your ex-employee? Uh, Stacy. Who's here? You just pointed? Right here. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, Stacy had been in your employ for how long? Uh, from November till, Aug uh, till September, actually, and um, gave me notice in the beginning of September that she was leaving. She said her husband no longer wanted her to work. And then uh, the next week, showed she up. She popped at up at her boutique. Yeah. Okay. And, so, um, Stacy starts working for her, and that's when you start having problems? Yep. Why? What was going on? The problems were going on much longer than that. Okay. In August, after I spoke to Stacy, I just had the proof that she was sabotaging my business. How was she sabotaging your business? Well, part of the deal was that I bought a client list, and these clients were supposed to continue to shop in my store. However, as soon as I bought the store, they all started coming going to Comac. I know now that she badmouthed my store to a bunch of customers How do you and clients. Stacy. Hmm. Stacy. Okay. And also, I left. I left my name. Well, what exactly did Stacy say to you? I just want to finish. I left my name, and she changed the name. Little did I know that the name was did not have a good reputation. I have letters from creditors and vendors that I can't get credit lines. I can't get vendors to sell me because my name now is associated with this. Why don't you just change the name of the store then? I, I will at this point, but... What is it she didn't do? How does she breach the contract? Okay, well, there was three ways that I believe she... I, that I know she breached the contract. First of all, she did not train and mentor me. I have three affidavits from employees that work there that said that they are the ones who had to teach me the computer systems, teach me everything that went on the store. Every single thing that she was supposed to teach me, she didn't. What is your understanding of the agreement that she's going to take time out of her store and go to your store and work for you? Because that's not the agreement by no, any means. No, but she could come afterwards when she's, when she's not working in our store and teach me how to do all of these are things. Are you that suggesting that she never taught you anything and she wouldn't answer your questions? She told me some things. And the but, staff but that you had there, isn't it staff that she had there, right, that, that they were, like, there was con continuity because that staff had been working there? Yes and no. There they were women that worked in her store well, the that, that, that she stuff didn't want any longer, so then she pushed them over to my store. How, how, do you, how do you conclude that someone who you end up employing was a reject of her store? That's I what mean, the manager and, told and me that was there. you also feel like she was giving you her reject merchandise. Definitely. How so? And I know this now. Who told you that, Stacy? Nope. Okay, who told you that? Part of the, part of the contract. Front and center, Stacy. come on up. When I bought the store and paid $70,000, it was supposed to be seasonal merchandise. Now that I've owned the store for a year, I see what is supposed to be there in September. You're getting ready for the winter. You, you have fall stuff. So when I bought the store, two or three weeks later, I'm already putting stuff on sale at 50% off. Part of the deal was so that my store was turnkey, that I was gonna be able to walk into the store and she had on order merchandise that was supposed to be sellable for September, October, November. But again, I'm a new So you were naive and that somehow is her breach that you, you know, what is it that you, tell me what your merchandise was that you feel like you got hoodwinked here. Bathing suit cover-ups, um, tank tops, Exclusively? shorts. Exclusively? I'm going to say 80%. Okay, do you have any proof that the merchandise you bought was 80% bathing suits? I have two affidavits from two employees that worked there at the time that said most of the merchandise was there from June, July, and August sitting Why there. Why your employees hate you, apparently. <laughs> Stacy. Do you want them? Or? Yeah, I do want sure. them. But apparently, uh, why is everybody tanking you? What, what, what is, like, what's the deal? You know apparently, what? everybody who was in your employ can't wait to ditch you. What's going on? I I haven't seen the affidavits, but I'm a businesswoman. I employed employees, with the exception of Stacy. Everyone is a doll. Okay. I have well, what happened with Stacy? Because you didn't fire Stacy. Stacy left you. 
Yeah, Stacy left me. Stacy gave me two weeks notice. Said my husband doesn't want me said to work. Said my husband does not want me to work. And then showed up at... The very next week showed up. Okay, in but Plano. why does that bother you? Don't you want that business to thrive? Wasn't that part of it? And you it's felt like she was going to a competitor. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so, Stacy, tell me, did you quit her store saying your husband didn't want you no. to work? I did quit, and it wasn't because of my husband, and I didn't show up. What, what reason did you give her that you were quitting? What Just reason? Um, Lisa was shorthanded coverage. I offered to work for her on a Friday. I told Laura. So did you have something against her? Not at that point, I didn't. I did not have anything against Laura. When did you develop something against her? The day that I worked for Lisa. The other girl that was covering, she got very sick. She went to the hospital. So Laura got upset with me because I was covering for Plainview to help Lisa out. So I got a nasty text. What did the text say? The, that is why we do not moonlight for Plainview. Okay, so when do you end up quitting? That day, I okay, said to her, so you, you know quit. something? What reason do you give her? Just the obvious that Just we're arguing? Just going back and forth in the arguing, I said, you know something? This is not working out for me. Okay, and then you went to work for her. Then I called Lisa. Then she called okay. and I found and then you And then you started, you started telling her things. What are the things no, that no, you no, were telling her? Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. So the question, does this defendant have to pay the balance of the money because she's all griping that uh, the plaintiff didn't teach me well? Well, I think that everybody always says read the fine print, but here in this situation, is there fine print? There's no fine print. It doesn't say what it means. What do you say? You know, this sound, it sounds like this guy's just trying to not pay the money. You know, it's not fair. Except it's a girl. What do you say? They need to pay. I, is there any defense? You didn't teach me enough. Oh, I don't know. I just think you need to pay the money that you say you're going to pay. Uh, you're probably right in the end, going inside the courtroom. Previously, before I actually went to work for Lisa, there was merchandise that we had ordered. It came into the store, and Laura didn't want it. Her response to me was, send it to Lisa. Lisa didn't order okay, it. Stop a second and what? elucidate me. If you yes. don't want merchandise that you order, can't you just send it back to the manufacturer? Right, but throughout the entire year, merchandise used to get transferred from her store to my store. So I would sometimes call and say, I don't remember ordering this, but she would say, no, you did. And I would always naively trust her. Then this one order came in. So I said to Stacy, I'm not accepting this transfer. I know I did not order this. This is not mine. And she um, said to me, I know, it's not yours. Send it because she here. felt bad. See, here's the thing. Everything in this case, both suits, depend on you being right that there's a breach of a contract, okay? Not that she's a jerk. Not that, oh, she's, she's so evil, she's not my good friend who I thought she was. I mean, you guys went on buying trips together and stuff, right? I have the dates, Your Honor. Just tell me how many trips you took. One, two, and three, give me the months. Four, five, six, seven, eight, the months. nine. Nine. September, no. October, January, December, January, February, February, March, and April. Okay. Those are no. just That's five the in the city. I Excuse disagree. me. Excuse no. me. And then in store appointments, November, July, July. How's Stacy answering that question? You see how Stacy answered the question? I don't can even I, know how Stacy can, can answer the question. Can I submit this to you? Go ahead. Yeah. No, uh, what is that? That's just your typewriting yeah, on a piece of paper. I, I don't want I that. Disagree. She, okay. You claim that you didn't take all those trips? No. All right, but see. Not. Other than Stacy coming in at the almost at the end of the year and telling you she would give you things that you did you know that she didn't like, or do you have any documented proof that you would call her and she wouldn't respond? I didn't know I'd be preparing for a lawsuit at the time when I sent her emails asking, "Can you please come and show me how to do payroll? Can you please do you come have and those emails?" No, I don't because okay. I, again, I so but, think but I know, but that's you've decided to up the ante and bring this into the lawsuit status, and you have to have some proof of what you're saying. You still owe her five grand. So she comes in here and she says, here's a contract, you owe me five grand. That's, she's fulfilled her burden of proof. You now have the burden of proving that she did not fulfill the contract and so you get to keep five grand that you owe. And I'm willing to hear what you have to say but also see what you have to show me that proves that she did not comply with the following sentence. She will work together to facilitate a smooth transition and provide additional training and support after the closing of this transaction. Because when you're telling me that for almost a year, you went on buying trips together, you, you, you shared merchandise, you advertised together, and all the other stuff that went on, I'm having a hard time seeing how she did it. She didn't turn out to be your best friend. That's for sure, okay? But how does that violate this? I don't have any emails or anything saved. And so we're done. You owe her the money and you need to pay her. On her lawsuit against you, you owe her the $5,000. On your counterclaim against her for $5,000, zero. That's my verdict. Good luck, folks.
And so the defendant comes out, you just didn't have the proof to back up what it is you're claiming. So what's your reaction to how this judgment comes down? I'm obviously disappointed with the verdict, but I'm glad that I had my day in court. And hopefully others can learn to not be so trusting people. Mm -hmm. Stacy, were you the big problem that caused the whole rift here? <laughs> I wasn't the problem. Laura started this. Mm -hmm. A lot of employees left her and went to other locations. Hey, this was your dream. You mm -hmm. said this was your dream. How, how, is it still your dream? Yes. All right. And yep. you're going to make it work? Yep. All right. Good for you. Thank okay. you. All right. Head right down this way. Good luck. All right, so while she's talking, you're not even looking, Al. You're, are you looking away on purpose because you don't want to even look at her? I'm so upset with how she handled this, which, you know, I thought that we would be two businesses that really worked together, so it was very difficult for me. She made it sound like you tried to take advantage of her after she bought the business. Yes, and uh, it's interesting how it all went so smoothly for 10 months, and then all of a sudden with Stacy, it just went downhill. It, it's just, it, it's hard because I really feel that she's listening to Stacy. Well, what was Stacy's motive be to do all that? I think Stacy would really like to own a store. <laughs> I really, I don't know what Stacy she is not a, she's not a nice person. It's unfortunate. Okay. All right, Harvey. You know, when you make a deal with somebody, you know, it's, the situation is, is pretty simple. Read it over and then say, is it vague? If it's vague to you in any way, it's going to be vague to the judge. Spell out specifically what each obligation is. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. Hi, I'm Angie Hicks, co-founder of Angie. And one thing I've learned is that you buy a house, but you make it a home. Because with every fix, update, and renovation, it becomes a little more your own. So you need all your jobs done well. For nearly 30 years, Angie has helped millions of homeowners hire skilled pros for the projects that matter. From plumbing to electrical, roof repair to deck upgrades. So leave it to the pros who will get your jobs done well. Hire high quality certified pros at Angie.com. This is the plaintiff, Wayne Van Boos. He says he and the defendant have been friends for over 25 years. So being here in court today is difficult, but what's right is right. He did some painting and contracting work for the defendant and was never paid because he had a falling out with her son. So he's here seeking the $1,713.50 he's rightfully owed. This is the defendant, Sylvia Cardona. She says the plaintiff became very aggressive towards her, was causing her a lot of stress, and she soon decided she couldn't work with him anymore, so she cut ties. It's laughable for the plaintiff to sue her today because she let him live in a room in her house, and he turns around and drags her to court? Police. She's accused of failing a friend. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $4,105 for damages caused by the plaintiff. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket. These litigants were friends for a quarter century, but the plaintiff says the All defendant right. stiffed him on a contractor's job. Honorable the defendant down. says yeah. that she let him live in her house, so really? It's the case of the contractor who got nailed. Thank you, Douglas. Wayne Van Hoos, you are suing your former friend Sylvia Cardona for costs associated with renovating an apartment she rented to you, and you are counterclaiming against him costs associated with bringing it back to the way it was before he was there. Okay, you two have a long and storied past. Tell me about it, Mr. Hoos. Let's start with you. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, it's lamentable uh, in an unfortunate circumstance that brings us here today. We have a friendship that spans over a quarter century. Um, you, so you two knew each other for 25 years. Did you ever date or no? No, no. It no, you were friends for 25 years. Yes. Okay. So and then you moved back into town. Back into the state of California last spring, correct. Okay. After which time uh, um, she reached out to me and had always expressed an interest in my particular skill set. Which is? Project management. I worked for a corporation for 30 plus years. Okay. And then, and why was she interested? in that. You're a dentist, right? I am a dentist, but I also own real estate. How much real estate do you own? I, I own two large uh, multi-housing properties in Arizona. How many? On, in the, on um, 79 units total. Okay, now I understand. <laughs> All right, so you just wanted some overseer that wasn't you because you're busy practicing dentistry. Right, absolutely. Right. So you get hired to do that, and she also rents you a room in her home. That's correct. Okay. Who else is living there? Her daughter when she's in, at home, when she's not going to school, her son and her son's best friend. 
Okay. Does she live there? Yeah, she has. Okay. So she rents you a room there. Mm -hmm. That didn't work out so well, did it? Because I can't help but notice that you're here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. So now, so you move in, but you don't like the room or you want to do some changes to the room. Do you ask permission to do the changes? Yes, I had permission for it. I ran every paint swatch by her. Okay. Um, the shower door, the, the closet doors, they had to be taken up. They had puff paint all over them from her other family members. Was there ever there. any agreement that she would pay you for the renovations that you were doing? Not that I'm aware of other, okay. other than to say, yeah, there was an agreement based on my employment with her. And she said, well, come work for me full time, uh, you know, pay you this much per hour, 40 hours a week. We'll translate that into a salaried position. And oh, by the way, I understand you need a home. Um, I have this. Um, here's the rent, $300 a month. Uh, happy to have you in home. $300 and we'll say, a month? Yeah, it was great. Okay. And so and then the office would be established downstairs. So the commute would be from upstairs to downstairs. Oh, and then you got to work right out of the office, in, uh, mm -hmm. an office in the home? Yes. All right, so you end up painting, for which you want to be reimbursed about $200. You bought bathroom accessories. Are you referring to plumbing fixtures? There were no towel rods at all. The room was bereft of any of those things, so I bought a towel bar. Okay, but who was paying for all these things? As I put it forward to her, every time I would make these investments, I said, you know, hey, it's great. Thank you for the opportunity to work with you, to live in your home. You've given me a great rate. Based on the four and a half, five years, I don't have- Do you a have a four and a half, five year lease? We didn't have a lease. You, know. you didn't have any lease. No. So you're a month-to-month -month tenant. Sure. Okay. In principle. Now, do you, there's nothing he did to that place that you didn't know he was going to do, right? Right. And there was only, according to him, there's one thing, some shutters and an office window that you didn't like and you didn't approve. Uh, that is right, partially. Okay. Um, I didn't really like any of his colors, any of his fixtures, any of his stuff. But, but you I, approved them? Um, implicitly, because I didn't say no. All right, so, and yet you have a counterclaim against him for $4,000 to restore it to how it looked before? Yes. Why? Because I Why am Why would he have to pay to do that? Was that ever part of your agreement with him? No. So no. So then why um, is it you're asking me to enforce an agreement that doesn't exist? Um, what happened between you two? Let's get to the nitty gritty, okay? <laughs> what happened between you two that puts us here today? Okay, what happened was that we have been friends forever. I was very supportive of him. Uh, fast forward a couple of months, he moves into the home and he starts just taking over. And it's like, man, like I, this is not what I had in mind. How does he start taking over? Um, well, I think he, he started using his uh, project manager brain and I think that took over. Then he comes to stay in my home and he decides that he's going to demolish that room and put it back together the way he wants. All I did was paint, put in new plumbing, and whatever else. And if you don't want it to, you say no. Absolutely. But you didn't say no. I didn't say no. How else did he take over, quote unquote? Um, uh, behaviorally. Okay, he's, let's talk about that. He's overbearing. He's, he's overbearing. very overbearing. He's, uh, he's a very driven person. So am I, but we have completely different communication styles. And so he just took over. Uh, he, he, Give me an uh, example. Um, I gave him the name of my contractor that, uh, that has done work for me over the years. And he called his subcontractors and started telling them, okay, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, and why aren't you here? And it's like, uh, we needed this yesterday, and it's like... Oh, so he was rude to the people who you work oh, with? Oh, absolutely, you, okay. yeah. Uh, my son was mad at him because uh, Wayne, soon after he moved in with me, uh, he started yelling at me, and I didn't like that. And How? So, what would he yell at you for? Uh, when, when we would be at the business meetings, we had financial planning meetings every week, and he would disagree with something, and he would just start yelling. So my son got mad at him one time. Was your time. son at the meetings? Yeah. He was, uh, my, my son is also my business partner. Okay. So he was at the meetings, and he told him, you are not to speak to my mom in those terms. Okay. And Did uh, you ever tell him, hey, who do you think you are? You don't talk to me about that. I'm the I, boss. I didn't tell him in that way. I was very nice, but I did tell him. See, you know what I think happened here? I think that you had a 25-year friendship with somebody, and then you put, you put them in a place where you, don't, you, don't, you can't respect boundaries. You, you have to respect boundaries. And the boundaries are, respect, respect isn't the right term, you have to um, understand boundaries. If he's your friend, he's your friend. He's in the friend zone. Okay, keep him in the friend zone. If you're gonna employ him and you want him to be your employee, 
and he's used to 25 years of talking to you however he wants to talk to you because he didn't magically become overbearing. No. You know, those are the things you liked about him. You know, and now all of a sudden he's not acting like an employee and he's, you feel he's disrespecting you in front of other people and all that stuff. What's a problem that you manage in so short a time to be fired and thrown out of the apartment? So would you hire somebody that you knew for a long, long time, say um, 25 years, would you hire them to work for you? Possibly. It's, really? Yeah. Until you take a chance at the friendship? Yeah. Okay. Would you? I would not because a friend is a friend. You don't mix the two together. Business stays separate. What if, the friends, what if the friend is actually a good worker? Would you take the chance and roll the dice? Yes, I would. Uh, you would risk the friendship though, right? Yes, I would. Yeah. If he's my friend, I'll do anything for him. If that means he needs a job, I'll give him a job. And if he does a lousy job, you'll cut him like a bad habit. Then I'll fire him. Oh, go. going inside the courtroom. I think you hit the nail on the head in the sense that it was one of those things where she brought forward her viewpoint, and I didn't necessarily agree with the viewpoint. And I just, I treated her like I had treated her for 25 years. Right. And I, and I never agreed with her on As many occasions. As opposed to treating her like your landlord and your boss. Right. Because that's never who you were with her. But that's a problem, isn't it? Yeah, and, because and, she is your boss. Correct. And she is your landlord, and you have a month-to-month -month tenancy. Yes. And so it was just kind of a bad idea, because now you've ruined a 25-year friendship over it. Yes. It's awful. It's regrettable. Yes. Um, who fired you? Her, she fired you or her son? It ultimately, it came through her son. And then what came first, that or, or the, apart the apartment? First they fired you, but then you were able to continue yeah, to live there? Yeah, there was a text to the effect that, um, you know, I can still live there as long as I need to. There's no rush until such time as I find another job. Okay, and, and so uh, how long, how much longer did you live there? He came, to, well, my hours were reduced on October the 1st, and it was October the 11th when I was asked to leave. And basically, oh, so what, in between October the 1st and October the 11th, what, hap what happened to change what that you could stay that, there? Well, actually, he came in and confronted me because I used some, I used some language in the course of my email that led him, oh. led him to believe that I was taking this up with legal counsel. I used the word counsel because I was talking to my friends about it, but I used the word counsel. He goes, oh, well, what is this all about? And I says, it's nothing. I just want Listen, to pay. Here's the pay. thing. You get to stay and do whatever you want. It's just that so does the other person. Sure. That's all it's about. Yeah. But then you also take the good with the bad because if you're an at-will tenant, Mm -hmm. because you're essentially all you then you get him one month's notice yeah. and that's what he gave you and then you moved out correct so there's no question about it. so essentially you are here to say I beautified a place I thought I'd get to stay there longer it turns out I was wrong that doesn't give you legal recourse to get the money you put in there back it doesn't okay and then you're here to say he's suing me so I'm suing him back unless there was an agreement between you as a landlord and him as a tenant that any beautifications modifications updates that he's doing he would have to take out and restore to his its original condition that's fine okay but you don't have that no I so don't. just like he doesn't have a leg to stand a legal leg to stand on you don't have a legal leg to stand on so on your lawsuit against her I am voting for her and on your lawsuit against him I am voting for him Okay? And that's how I'm ruling that way. Sure. Okay? Goodbye, folks. Well, this case comes out as a wash. Uh, nobody wash. wins. Um, what's your feeling on how, how it worked out? Well, I think the loss is the loss of the friendship. And that's tragic. Is okay. this a reparable situation? The friendship? I'm always hopeful. Are you going to reach out? I mean, yeah, I mean, sure. I think I do. I mean, that's the way I am. All right, Thanks. All right, and so uh, you don't collect anything on your side either. What's your What's your feeling coming out of the courtroom here? There goes your friend of 25 years. Um, I think the friendship was rather one-sided, but um, it, it's disappointing. Why did you let that happen? Um, I think I was too kind, too easygoing, too tolerant um, until I reached my limit. So your defense here is you're too nice. I am too nice. <laughs> yes, well, I am very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you want him as a friend still? Uh, it would be great to reconsider that option. You're too nice. I am. Harvey? <laughs> I gotta tell you, if you are gonna hire a friend, that's where you have a sit down and you say, look, let's go through specifically what I expect of you, what you expect of me. If you don't do that, that's when the friendship is really gonna be at great risk. And that will do it for this case litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Lutretia Spurgeon. She says her car was parked on the street outside her house and the defendant broke her windshield. 
He was playing ball in the street, admitted he did it to her, and now he and his mother must be forced to pay because she hasn't been able to get them to pay up a penny of the $1,000 she's owed. These are the defendants, Cherise and Wayne Teak Wilson. Wayne Teak says he was indeed playing ball in the street, but the ball never ever hit the plaintiff's windshield. He has no idea how the windshield broke. They aren't about to hand out their hard-earned cash for something they didn't do, and in turn, owe nothing. They're accused of not scoring with a neighbor. All right, all parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant's kid broke her windshield on the car when uh, the kid was playing ball. But the defendants say the ball didn't hit the car. It's the case of you are the wind beneath my windshield. Thank you, Douglas. Lutricia Spurgeon? Yes. You are suing Sharice Wilson and Wayne Teak Wilson? Mm -hmm. How old is Wayne Teak? 14. I'm 14. Big 14 year old. Uh, for $1,000 that you say you are damaged as a result of his negligence throwing a football? Yes. Okay, what happened? Um, on a Saturday, they were out playing ball. My car was parked on the street, and they were playing, playing with the ball. Who's they? Um, the young man here and his friends. Okay. They were playing ball, which was fine. Um, and the, car, the ball hit the car several times, and it bounced. Did you in. see it? Yes, I did. Did yes. you go out there? Yeah, we were on the porch, and I asked them to stop playing with the ball. And, then and where I, had it hit your car? It bounced on the, on the hood of the car, and then it bounced to the front of my windshield. Oh, you better believe they're not going to keep playing football if I see that. What, like, how did, how did they, and then they kept playing? Yeah, they were still playing, yes. What they did were. they do, ignore you? Did they? Yes, answer? they did ignore me, yes. Did they say anything to you? Like, no. okay, we'll be careful, anything? Nothing, nope. Mm -mm. Do you know them? We're just neighbors. We're just neighbors? Yes. I mean, do you ever, did you see him grow up? Did you, did you, do you know his mother when he didn't stop playing? Did you go see his mother? No. Okay, so what I happened? Didn't. I actually moved my car, and then when I moved my car the next morning, when I was washing my car, I noticed that the windshield was cracked. So I went and I sorry, I spoke to him the dead same day, and I asked him. I said, "You realize that your ball cracked my windshield?" And, and he what said, did he say? He said he, he just apologized. He didn't say yes. He realized it or no, he did not. What happened? Wayne Teak. Teak. Oh, um, I'm talking to you. She's not gonna be able to tell me. She wouldn't have to play ball with you. Were you playing ball with your mother? Nope. Okay, talk to me. You guys were out there. You were throwing the football. Mm-hmm. Do you play football? I can't hear you. Yes. Okay. And did the ball hit her car? It hit, hit the trunk of the car. Did it ever hit the windshield? Mm -mm. Did you tell her that you that mm -hmm. yes, it hit the windshield, and you're sorry? I I just said I was sorry. I didn't say it I hit the windshield. Are you sure? I'm positive. When did you uh, hear anything? She came to my home <clears throat> Sunday morning, well Sunday afternoon, and she said your son was outside playing football, and the ball hit my car, it hit my glass, and I was kind of shocked because he knows better. So when she came and spoke to me, I said, well, let me, she said, I spoke to him, and he said he did it, and I said, whoa. I said, well, when I go pick him up and speak to him, I'll come speak to you and tell you what happened. Right. So um, I, I said, Wayne Teak, what happened with this football? And because, when you say you know, he knows what can happen, that's why? Because it happened before? Yes, because um, <laughs> at nine, they was playing football in the street, and he, that he threw the ball and tapped my glass. Oh. So he already knew that that was a no-no. Okay, so, so well, as soon as you confront him, yeah, he says that had to be scary. <laughs> when your last victim confronts you about it, all right. And so he said, my ball never hit the, the, the front of the car, it just hit the trunk of the car. But the fact that it was the other two kids that was there, it kind of got a little messy because I started to be in the middle of the mess and I didn't want to be in the middle of it because once I explained to the, the one parent that I was dealing with, it got a little bit um, disrespectful and I wasn't going to tolerate it. So I said, you know what? I'm only going to take care of Wayne Teak and this is what All I right, feel I'm needs to happen. I'm reading from your son's statement mm -hmm. that he signed today and here's what the statement says. I knew it wasn't crazy. The plaintiff did speak to me after that. Her mother was the one that came to me. She asked if I cracked the plaintiff's windshield, and since I didn't know which one of my friends could have done it, I just said that I did it. But it wasn't true. Did you mm -hmm. say then that you did crack the windshield? Mm, yeah, yeah, just like... <laughs> just to get her out of your hair? No, well, not to get... What yeah. happened with these other two kids? When you talk to the other parents and then you talk to her, what is it you tell her? Um, I tell them what she said to me. 
I said, um, she came over. She said, the boys was out there playing football. Um, she said, my, she spoke to my son. He was very respectful. But then what happened was, she said she got in the car and then she drove the car from off the block where it was into her lot. I told them what she said. And they said, well, why she didn't see the glass broke then? And that's when everything started. The other parents was not trying to hear anything she had to say. Okay, when, where did you park the car when you moved it? Right in front of my, my car is parked right in front of my house, but across the street. So all I had to do was put it in drive, make a left into my driveway. So what is the answer to that question of why you did not see it cracked? It was eight o'clock at night when I moved my car. Okay, let me see a picture of the crack. Sure. Now, in, in fairness, yeah. let me explain to you because I've had this issue. When the football hits the car, it doesn't necessarily create the crack right away. It creates the, din the, the okay. ding. The ding starts to crack later. Like, is that how it worked no, for well, you or no? Or it was cracked right away? It was cracked right away. Like, yeah. it didn't ding and then it just went across the top. In any event, you're suing for $1,000 and you're suing two people. One of the boys that was playing that acknowledges today that while he was playing a football hit your car, at a minimum he acknowledges that, and who according to his own statement acknowledged back then that he hit the windshield. Okay. Why are you suing her? I spoke to Ms. Wilson on several occasions. I spoke to her there following Sunday. We talked all week back and forth. Because she's the every mother. Day. Yes. So you feel that the mother is responsible for her child's Yes, I know most people feel that way because yes. it feels and, right. But that's not the, the actual law. You know, if it was a small child, then the parent would be guilty of not supervising their child if the small child did something. He's a 14-year-old. He's allowed to play outside. Right. There's nothing. There was no negligent supervision on her part. She didn't hand him some dangerous weapon. So there's some very specific circumstances under which a parent is liable. This isn't one of them. The case against her is dismissed. Of course, you have a case against him. Now, your feeling is, all right, there were three kids playing out there. You know, you actually offered to pay for a third of it. Yeah, because there was the three kids and the, the other two parents was, I mean, the other parent that I spoke to that was speaking for the other two kids, his mouth was trashy. So I said, you know what? I'm not dealing with you. And I told her the same thing. I said, look, I'm not going to let y'all collide because it's not going to be nice. What I'm going to do is the bill was $575. That was the first bill she told me. Can I see I the said, $575 bill? I said, that's pretty steep. But you know what? When T part of that is $191.66. When he start working in July, he will pay you. And he needs to learn responsibilities. That's right. So, and next thing you know, I, it was $1,000 and okay. now we're here. So is the defendant responsible if the 15 year old throws a ball in it uh, and it hits the car and breaks the windshield? I don't think he should be uh, or she should be held responsible. Because? It's an accident. I mean, it's kids. First of all, it's kids. It's just kids. It's just kids. So it's nothing malicious. What do you say? Well, Pinky and I both agree that someone has to pay the damage for the vehicle, and it should be the parents, if it's not the kids. Okay, so three, uh, two people and a dog agree going inside the courtroom. So why would you be entitled to three days of car rental at 165 and $214.40 for time off from work? None of that has to happen when you replace a windshield. Yeah. You call a company, they come to your job, they come with this like robotic thing that takes your bad windshield out, puts your good windshield in, and it's not even that expensive. I mean, it's about this. I actually, like I told Miss Wilson, I called four different places, and the one that you say, like safeguard that comes to the yeah, house. Yeah, that's it. They they couldn't do the window because it's a brand new car. So they said it was three different models of the window, and then that's when I went and had Chrysler do it. Okay, how long did it take? They had my car for three days. I, I need you to prove that. It's, it's right there. It's in I'm, here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you have anything from Safeguard saying they couldn't do it? No, it was just over the phone. How are you going to prove up your time from work? I didn't get paid. I didn't have no more days off. What do you do for a living? Do you have pay stubs? Not on me. No, I don't. Okay. You're not entitled to time off from work because you haven't brought me any proof of that. You are entitled to, apparently, that is exactly how long it took for them to fix her car, which is crazy, but... I can't imagine you would do it that way if you hadn't, in fact, explored the safeguard option. Um, therefore, you're entitled to $730. I understand in your mind that, hey, there were three guys out there. Why would my son, you know, I'll pay my everything. You acted very morally like a good mother does. You really did. And I'm, I, I, I need to tell you that because I don't see it enough oh, thank in, you. in my courtroom. Oh, thank you. And I'm so happy to see it today. Thank you. Stop putting your mother through this by playing a football. Okay, it's an accident. I'm kidding. It's an accident, okay? But you do have to take responsibility for accidents. When you're playing around there, it's the three of them acting in concert. It's what we call 
joint and several liability. That's what gives her the right to, to pursue one person. He, in theory, has a right now to turn around and sue the other two people who are playing ball if, if he says that, you know, well, we're all playing, but, you know, we don't know which of us hit or which ball hit or which throw or we're all in unison. We're all doing the bad thing. We're all culpable. You guys pony up your 191. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but, but the victim in a case has a right to just choose which of them she wants to sue and have them pay the whole thing. And the onus, the burden is on that party to go ahead and try to sue okay. the other people to contribute. All right. So based on that, I'm going to find a judgment in, in your favor against him for the $730. Work hard. <laughs> Work hard. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Will the plaintiff be able to prove her case and get almost all of what she sued for? And uh, hopefully on your side, a lesson learned. What, uh, oh. What's your feeling here? Right, let's, talk to, let's talk to T. T, <laughs> your sense of responsibility is, is what this is all about. What are, you, what are your thoughts about what you've learned here? Not to play with the ball no more. No, just in the street. Well, you're a football. football. You like to play football, mm -hmm. right? So you got to play with the ball. Yeah. Officer McIntosh played tons of football. We all did. So yeah. anything else? Uh, how about being just being more careful? Mm-hmm. All right. Are you going to work to earn this money and pay this back? Yes. Okay. Good man. Okay. All right. Head around the corner. See, he talked. Yeah. All right. Step on in here. All right. Uh, you ready? Satisfied? Yes. Mm-hmm. What was this like for you to go through there? I mean, this is a, it's an accident, right? Yeah, it was is an it a accident. Big deal? It was in the beginning, yes. It was a big deal? Yeah, How a brand new car. How did it become a big deal? Because it was a brand new car and I shouldn't have to go with issues like that, but I'm glad that it was solved. Mm -hmm. All right, Harvey. Okay, here's the way it works, Kurt. Uh, the defendants can now turn around and sue the other people playing ball for their equal share, so it's divided up, so the defendants don't bear the entire burden.